All right, problem four, we got a cylindrical barrel with a diameter of two feet and it contains collected rainwater. And it's shown here. The water drains out of the valve. It's not shown at the bottom of the barrel. The rate of change of the height h of the water in the barrel with respect to time is modeled by the equation dh dt is equal to negative one tenth square root of h, where h is measured in feet and t is measured in seconds. The volume v of a cylinder with radius r and height h is v is equal to pi r squared times h. Okay, part A. Find the rate of change of the volume of water in the barrel with respect to time when the height of the water is four feet. Indicate units of measure. Okay, so you really just gotta find the derivative of this and plug in um, four for h. Yeah, shouldn't be too bad. Um, let's, uh, let's go through it, yeah. All right, so this is implicit differentiation or maybe like related rates you can kind of think of think of related rates probably what you got to yeah related rate is also what it was called in um probably chapter two in your calc course um so we find dvdt and that'll be remember r and h are your variables so you're gonna have like um product rule so pi times 2r times dr dt leaving h as constant plus this time leaving r as constant plus pi times r squared. The derivative of h is just one, so it doesn't really matter, times dh dt. Okay, so we are given, um, I'm, trying, I'm wondering if I should squeeze this in here. Maybe I should. So I'm gonna finish this problem up here so that it doesn't get crammed in there. Okay, so dvdt. So here's the thing. When you plug in um, h for the height, by that I mean when you plug in four for the height, um, you know, you already know what dh dt is. You plug that in here, obviously, but you're like, well, what is r? Well, r is, um half of the diameter, and your total diameter is two. So R is one. Let's carry that over here. So R is one, H is four, but what's DR DT? You're like, how do you figure that out? Well, here's the thing. Um, the radius is not gonna be changing its length as it's getting filled, because you know it's a cylinder. And so the radius is always the same. It's always a distance from here to here, it's in this circle. The height changes, so the radius is constant. So that means the derivative or the rate of change of the radius is zero. So this all falls away. And this, like this becomes zero, so that means all of this doesn't become anything. So this is just zero plus pi r squared or pi times one squared times dh dt times negative one tenth square root of h. Yep. And this will be your answer. We just have to simplify it. It'll be negative. Well, whoops, on. Plus, let me put the four in for h. And going like this. Negative square root of four is two. So negative two tenths. Two tenths. Pi. Feet cubed per second, or cubic feet per second. You can simplify it to negative one fifth pi if you want. Same thing. So that's part A. Part B, when the height of the water is three feet, is the rate of change of the height of the water with respect to time increasing or decreasing? Okay, so what you wanna essentially do is figure out what the sign of the derivative is of the rate of change of the height of water at this time. If the derivative is positive, it's gonna be increasing. If the derivative is negative, it's gonna be decreasing. But keep in mind, you're finding the derivative of the rate of change, which is essentially the second derivative in terms of height, of how height is changing. So you're finding the derivative of the derivative or the derivative of, the, of this one. 
Um, so let me um, I, 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 let me squeeze Part B over here. If by squeeze, I mean fit it nice and neatly. So we want to find the second derivative of height with respect to time. So taking the derivative of this. So remember, the square root of h is just one is h to the one half power. So the derivative would just be one half h to the negative one half times dh dt. Breaking this down, it's become <clears throat> this becomes negative one over twenty times the square root of h times dh dt, which we originally is negative one tenth times the square root of h. So we, again, we've got these square roots of h. And they actually cancel each other out. How nice. And then negative and negative make a positive. 20 times a 10 is 200. So what you have for part b is a positive number. It's small, but this is still greater than 0. So the rate of change of height is increasing when the height of the water is 3 feet. That's part B. And part C, at time t equals zero seconds, the height of the water is five feet. Use separation of variables to find an expression for h in terms of t. Not a problem. These are actually my favorite. Not my favorite, actually. I like the solids revolutions. So what you got to do here is um, separate the h's, separate the t's, and integrate. So we're solving this equation, essentially, for h. So Dividing by square root of h and multiplying the right by dt will get, and I'm going to do that down here, you'll get 1 over the square root of h times dh is equal to negative 1 tenth times dt. And from here, you set each side, you integrate each side. So you set up an integral, and then we integrate. This is just using reverse power rule. We're going backwards, so adding one half to the power, so h to the one half divided by one half is equal to negative one tenth t plus our constant. I like to call it c1 in case we have to find others. Now we can find c1 by using this initial condition. We're told that when t is zero. The height is 5. So we plug in the point 0, 5. This becomes 2h. So 2 times 5 to the 1 half, or 2 times, let me just put square root of 5. 2 times the square root of 5 equals, this becomes 0, equals c1, right? So c1 is 2 root 5. And so your equation then becomes, replacing this, 2 square root of h is equal to negative 1 tenth t plus 2 root 5. Now, now I'm assuming that they're going to want you to solve for h completely. Divide everything by 2. You'll get the square root of h is equal to negative 1 20th t plus root 5, because these twos will cancel. And then you square everything. To get this h, you square the entire right quantity. And you'll get h is just this, the quantity of negative 1 20th t plus root 5, all of this to the second power. And this will be your answer. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Any feedback is usually appreciated. And also let me know if there are any topics or anything else you want me to um, put together before the AP exam date. And um, please subscribe, that helps me.
stay motivated to make these videos for you. So good luck.